are invited to Ozark Full Gospel Church, located in Ozark, Missouri, where we are touching the Ozark with Jesus Christ. Sit back, enjoy, as Pastor James Aiken brings forth God's exciting word. Well, let the closer brothers tell me what you hear. Time of his return. Cup and dry, dear old crop is going to town. Come on to take us home. Gonna have us a party dancing on the streets and go. Well, I'm going to the party up and go. And they ain't gonna move with my Jesus walking hand in hand. Dancing, singing, chatting to the beat. Well, I'm going to a party way up for glory land. Oh, I'm going to a place of no sickness and no pain. Going to a place they ever break in disappointment and heart it. I'll be taken away. I'm going to a party. It's time to celebrate. Well, I'm going to a party up and go and they ain't gonna be with my Jesus walking hand in hand. Dancing, singing, chatting to the beat of an angel band. Well, I'm going to a party way up a glory land. Gonna celebrate Jesus, praise his holy name. When we're all finished, we'll do it all again. Gonna worship and adore. One who gave his life for me Gonna love him and serve him Throughout eternity Well, I'm going to a party up the floor And they ain't gonna be with my Jesus Walking head in hand Dancing, singing, shouting to the beat of an angel band Well, I'm going Gonna celebrate Jesus, praise his holy name. When we're all finished, we'll do it all again. Gonna worship and adore one who gave his life for me. Gonna love him and serve him throughout eternity. Well, I'm going to a party up a floor and land. Gonna be with my Jesus walking hand in hand. Dancing, singing, chatting. The beat of an angel band. Well, I'm going to a party way up a glory land. Yes, I'm going to a party. It's up a glory land. Well, I started out seeking salvation. I had a hard time resisting temptation, but I kept on searching till I found the King of Kings. Well, I kept on searching, 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 searching. I kept on searching till I found him. I kept on searching, 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 searching. I kept on searching till I found him. I kept on searching, 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 searching. I kept on searching till I found him. He changed my heart. Looking high and low along the wandering way, my soul was filled with sorrow until that glorious day. All it was in my anticipation gave way to sweet consolation, and I kept on searching till I found the King of Kings. Well, I kept on searching, 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 kept on searching till I found him. I kept on searching, searching. Searching, 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 searching,
Praise the Lord. Jude, verse 1 and 2. Aren't you happy for the fact that we've got some good word of God that will encourage us and strengthen us? Verse 1 and 2. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called Mercy unto you, and peace, and love be multiplied. I want to use for a subject tonight, end time encouragement. You may be seated. End time encouragement. I believe the closer we uh, approach the end of this uh, world, that we're going to need more encouragement. I don't know about you, but encouragement helps us go that extra mile, helps us keep on going. And how many in this room need some encouragement once in a while? Yeah, we do. And so the, the Jude, as he writes, he, he says, I was going to talk to you about this common, that don't mean simple, just means well-known salvation. And I was going to write to you about just simple salvation. But he said it was needful and it was necessary that I tell you to earnestly contend. And that word contend means to fight for the faith. And so what I'm going to be doing tonight is I'm going to be fighting for the faith a little bit. Because I want to share with you some things that God give us as encouragement at the end of of this journey. The closer we approach the end of this world, the more hectic. Have you noticed it's getting darker outside? Have you noticed that? I'm speaking spiritually. 
Have you noticed it's getting more wicked everywhere we turn? Have you noticed that the world has almost uh, uh, put their approval on wickedness? And so it is a very dark time we live. But I'm thankful for the fact that Jesus is bigger than ever. And he is so awesome and so incredible that he will take us through on this journey, in time encouragement. I want you to notice in verse one that Jude says we have, and there are three positions we hold. Are you a Christian? Wave at me if you're a Christian. There's three positions that we hold as Christians, and Jude says there's three of them here in verse one. We hold the position of sanctified by God the Father. That word sanctified means set apart, put in a place, a place of protection, a place of security. We are sanctified by God the Father. Notice preserved in Jesus Christ. That's the second thing that we are positionally, that we, we hold. And then we're called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. God called us out and summons us to come to his son, Jesus Christ. We see God the Father sanctifies. We see God the Son preserves. And we see God the Holy Ghost calls us when the word of God is preached in power. I want to talk to you a little bit about sanctification that God brings into our life. God wanted to take us from one place and put us in a new place. God wanted to take us from a place of sin and death and, and, and tragedy, and God wanted to take us from that place of darkness and place us in a place of protection and a place of goodness. But God wanted to do it in such a way that we would be set apart, that we would not be like those of the night, that we'd be not like those that are of sin, that we would be a peculiar people, we'd be a royal priesthood. And so God the Father so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus Christ and Jesus prepared a place for you and I through his death and burial and resurrection so that God the Father could take us, draw us, the scripture says. No man comes to the son Jesus Christ except the uh, Father which sent me draw him. And the Father draws us by the preaching of God's word. And when we repent and give Christ our heart and our life, God takes us and puts us in a new place and that place is in his son, Jesus Christ. And when God takes us and puts us in that new place in his son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ takes over and preserves us. And God tells us how he does it. He, we are called, the scripture says, we are called, and how are we called? We are called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, many are called, but few are chosen. How many people are, are called? Well, I believe God so loved the world that he intended to call the whole world into the arms of Jesus Christ, amen. Matthew 22, verse 14 says, many are called, but few are chosen. So we know that only the ones that listen to God, turn to God, are chosen to go to heaven. You, you will never be chosen to go to heaven until you are called and you answer that call. When you answer that call, God the Father puts you in a new place in Christ Jesus and Jesus Christ preserves you and I until the day that God returns and that God does a new thing on this planet. It's a wonderful thing to be sanctified. There is positional sanctification. That means that as a child of God, Brother Darrell, we are positionally in Christ. We have been sanctified positionally. We as a child of God. We're not going to be a child of God. If we got born again, we are a child of God now. Amen. And we may be a babe in Christ, but that still makes us part of the family of God. And we need to understand that when we give our heart to Jesus Christ, we are 
sanctified. God positionally sanctified. It's the Father God that sanctifies us. The Bible says the Father sanctifies us. How many, how many are glad to know that when God, when you responded to Jesus Christ, God the Father sanctified you. He put you in a place. That word sanctification means to be to be set apart. And I want to say tonight, I'm glad to be set apart from the law of sin and death. I'm glad to be set apart from wickedness and the darkness and the evil of this world. I'm glad Jesus came and, and rescued me and shed his blood for my sin. And, and I'm glad Jesus did the work so the Father could draw me and the Father could bring me to a place of sanctification. Thank God I'm in Christ. That's being sanctified. I'm in the place of Christ being sanctified. I'm maybe not perfect yet, but I'm in a perfect place. I'm maybe not totally sanctified yet, but I am in the place of sanctification. I'm there where God does his stuff. Amen. Are you listening to me? I'm in Jesus where God does his stuff. I'm at the cross of Calvary where God did his stuff and where God does his stuff. I'm glad that I've been sanctified. And there he is the sanctification that is positional. As a child of God, we are in that place that the Father put us in Jesus Christ. And then there's progressive sanctification. That means Joshua's getting better. That means uh, Jerry is getting better. That means Ward is getting better. That means Vince is getting better. That means Bob is getting better. That means Richard's getting better. That means Chuck, never mind. But anyway, uh, the, the truth is we, we're getting better. That's progressive sanctification. God works on us. And boy, does he work us over from time to time. He gets after us. He deals with us. Why? Because he wants us to progress in the sanctification. And I'm glad that Jesus Christ called me out, that God called me into a place of sanctification. And I want you to know I was set apart in Christ Jesus and God is continually setting me apart, sanctifies, sanctifying me by progression and I am getting better, I am getting uh, stronger, I am getting closer to the place to one day God will completely take me out, take me into the presence of heaven and I will be completely sanctified in his presence. Woo! Sanctified in the presence of God Almighty. I can't think of a better place to be sanctified than walking streets of gold. And by the way, you're going to have to be sanctified to walk streets of gold because he ain't going to have dirty feet pattering around on him. We'll be sanctified. Amen. Come on now. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're responding. Notice here the Godhead. Sanctified by God the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ, and called called by the Holy Spirit of God. I'm glad that God called me and I'm glad. You know, uh, 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 the devil couldn't stop me from getting in and he's not gonna stop me from getting out. Woo, praise the Lord. The devil couldn't stop me from getting in and he's not gonna stop me from getting out. And I'm gonna get out of this place alive. Ziegler used to say, Zig Ziegler used to say, Settle down, don't get all upset. You're not gonna get out of here alive. Well, I got news for him, I'm getting out of here alive. Amen, praise the Lord. And I'm not upset about it. I'm not afraid I've been sanctified by the presence of God. Three positions we hold. Sanctified by God the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ, and called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many are called, but few are chosen. How many are called? God so loved the world. Everybody's called. And I want you to know not everybody answers that call, but the people that do answer that call are sanctified by God, placed in the person of Jesus Christ, and you are preserved in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and called to be the worker and to be the masterpiece that God intended you to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. God called me out. And the gospel always calls you out of sin. The gospel always calls you away from sin. So in that verse one, we see sanctified by God the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ. Isn't that good, preserved? That means we won't go rotten. That means we won't go sour. That means we are protected. That means we are sealed under the day of redemption. That means in Jesus Christ, nothing can separate us 
from the love of God. That means in Jesus Christ, no power, nothing can come and, and sever us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. In Jesus Christ is the safest place anyone could possibly be. No bombs can, can uh, disintegrate you. No germ warfare can destroy you. No graveyard can keep you. No sickness and disease can hold you down, pull you down, and grind you out. Nothing can come against you. No demon spirit, no demonic power, not the devil, not things to come, not things ahead. Nothing would happen around you because you are preserved in Jesus Christ. Woo, what a storm shelter Jesus Christ is. What a, what a fallout shelter Jesus Christ is. What a preserved place we have in Jesus Christ. And things may get bad, but I'm standing in the right place, amen. I'm standing in the place that bombs can't touch me. I'm standing in the place that death can't have me. I'm standing in the place that sickness and disease can't destroy me. I'm standing in the place in which God says, you stand there in Jesus Christ, you'll be preserved in Jesus Christ. Christ called, called out, called to be a child of God, called to worship the Lord. And I want you to know, I'm so glad that I answered the call to come. Called to be saved, called to live for God, called to forgiveness, called to Jesus Christ, called to prayer, called to be a witness for Christ, called to shine and serve and to love God, called and one day, one day, we will be called home. Yeah. Amen, come on now. Yeah. I'm preaching better than you responded. Sanctified, preserved in Jesus Christ, called. And I'm glad the gospel of Jesus Christ calls us. And when we're called, God sanctifies us, puts us in the, the protecting hand of God. Secondly, there are three benefits we have. Three benefits we have. There's three positions we have, sanctified by the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ, and called by the gospel of God, by the gospel of Jesus. There are three benefits we have. The first benefit we have is mercy. Notice verse two, mercy unto you. The second benefit we have is peace. And the third benefit we have is love. And peace and mercy and love is going to be multiplied. How's that? I love peace, but can you just think about multiplied peace? I love mercy. You just think about multiplied mercy? You see, Chuck and I had to have multiplied mercy. Hello? Chuck didn't even name it. Well, he did just now. He's feeling sorry for me. But we have the benefits, and I want to say this. We have the benefit of mercy, and I'm so glad that God brought mercy to my life. I'm glad that mercy is mine. My favorite scripture is in Psalms 136, verse one. It's my favorite Psalm, verse 26. My favorite scripture is Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing. He which has begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. But my favorite Psalm is 136. It's 26 times. It, gives, it says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. And 26 times God says, his mercy endures forever. No matter the situation, no matter the, the problem, no matter the complication, God's mercy endures forever. And I'm glad at this late hour, God has mercy. And that mercy will never, never uh, fade out. That mercy will always be there. And I'm grateful for the fact that God's mercy endures forever. I'm thankful for the peace of God. I'm thankful for the love of God. And I'm thankful for the fact that God has given us these three things multiplied to us. Peace of God, mercy of God, love of God. How many, how many, just think about that. Everybody say with me, love of God, peace of God, mercy of God. Woo, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way the devil can get to us. Amen, sanctified, preserved in Christ Jesus, called by God to win, called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. I'm glad to have peace. I'll not read the whole scripture to you, but John 14, 27, he, Jesus Christ said, peace I leave with you. Think about that. Jesus Christ said, peace I leave with you. Now I've had some folks come to my house and that ain't what they left with me. 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've had some people call me and that ain't what they left with me. I've had some people come by and visit me and that ain't what they left. But Jesus came and left peace with his disciples. And he came by to leave peace with you. Amen. Nothing can take it. The world didn't give me this peace and the world can't take it away. Jesus Christ give me peace in the storm. Jesus Christ gives me peace in the trial. Jesus Christ gives me peace in the darkness. Jesus Christ gives me peace in every situation. Peace God leads with us. Jesus Christ said, when I leave, I'm gonna leave behind peace and mercy and love, the love of God, the peace of God, and the mercy of God. Aren't you glad that we have those things in our life? I'm so thankful for the fact that the peace of God is in my life. Um, Mike Pence, our vice president, I read an article the other day of him, and they were talking about they're working in the White House, and President Trump was busy, and you know, there's kind of been a fire storm there, and a lot of adversity, a lot of things going on there in the White House, and, and the article I read said, uh, President Trump just turned to look at Mike Pence, and Mike Pence is a great Christian man, I heard him preach one time. Boy, he can preach too. And President Trump turned to Mike Pence in all the tur tur turbulence and all the storm. And he said, Mike, Mike, where do you get that peace? Well, you know, his answer is the same as mine, Jesus. Amen. We get that peace from Jesus. I'm grateful for the fact that Jesus brings peace to us. And so it's multiplied to us. And then there's the love of God. And I love this. Verse 37 of Romans chapter 8. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Aren't you glad that we are more than conquerors? We are more than conquerors. You say, well, I just want to barely get by. That ain't what this verse says. Well, preacher, I just want to hold on till I get there. That ain't what this verse is saying. Well, preacher, I just got, you just pray that I'll make it all just hold on, stay faithful. That ain't what this verse says. This verse says you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. This verse says no matter what comes your way, you are more than. Let me tell you, that is a description of a Christian. He's more than. He's more than just uh, adversity and trials in his life. He's more than he's more than anything this world could put out. He's bigger than the world because the Christ that lives in him has overcome the world. The Christ that lives in you and I has overcome the world. That's why Jesus Christ said that uh, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Isn't that beautiful? And so, nay, in all these things, you say, what things, you preacher? You just name the things you want to name. Well, I've got problems with the house, and I've got problems with the neighbor, and I've got problems with the job, and I've got problems in my physical health, and I've got problems in finances, and I've got problems with the uh, things around me, and I've got problems here, and preacher, you just don't know the problems I've got. Nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors to him that loved us, Amen. I'm glad that we are more than the storm. We're more than the trials. We're more than death. We're more than the, we're greater because Jesus Christ lives inside of us. I love this verse, Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. I, hear, I heard a guy tell me the other day, he said, when I get to heaven, I'm gonna ask God why this is going on. When I get to heaven, I'm just gonna ask God why, why all the problems I've had. And I'm gonna ask God all these problems. And I, and I just stopped and I said, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. When you get to heaven, you ain't gonna ask God nothing. You're gonna be too busy crawling across the sea of glass thanking God you made it home. Amen. Amen. I, I don't remember where I read this or where I heard this, but years ago there was, there was a teenager boy and he was out running around with some other teenagers and it was either in Chicago or New York, one of the bigger cities, it may have been LA, I don't know where it was exactly, but a big city. 
And when, you know how teenage boys go to horsing around doing stupid things. And, and these boys had, had picked up groceries or something and, and they were horsing around. And, and as they were driving down the road, they, this one kid that ha starts hanging out side the, the car and he throws up in the air this big old frozen turkey. And a car runs right into it. It breaks through the windshield. And he hits this woman in the face and busts her face, breaks about every bone in her face. So bad that they had to fix her neck. It had been broken and they reconstructive surgery. They had to put braces on her and they had to work on her. She was just a pitiful mess. She was in intensive care for days and days and days and they had to do plastic surgery and her face was still deformed and the, the teenager had been arrested and put in jail and they were having a big deal about it that this teenager was, uh, he, he ought to get the full force of the law and this teenager needs to go to jail for what he did and they published it big time how wicked this young teenager was. And the woman's in the hospital, she's deformed for the rest of her life in her face. And it come time for the trial and the young man stood before the judge and the judge is going to sentence this young man, this teenager. And the judge says to the young man, quivering lip and crying, he said to the young man, and they wanted him to go to jail for 10, 20 years. They wanted him to go to jail for a long time. The, the public did. And the little, the little guy, this skin thin little teenage boy, not very old at all. The judge says, I'm gonna sentence you. I think it was 20 days in jail. And I'm going to give you 30 or 40 hours of public service and you're gonna to have to stay out of trouble. And I think it was something like 15 or 20 years, stay out of trouble. The courtroom was furious, people were angry. Reporters were angry and furious, why? that this judge didn't bring judgment upon this teenager more than what they did. And they found out later it was the woman with the deformed face. It was the woman that spent days in intensive care, reconstructive surgery, wiring her mouth shut, holding things together. She was the one that asked the judge, go easy on the boy. Please go light on the boy. When it came sentencing, and he's quivering, his lips are just quivering, he's just crying, and he can't stop crying. The woman walked up to him with her deformed face, and she hugged the boy and pulled him down to her shoulder, and he began to sob. And she began to stroke the back of his hair, and she said, young man, I forgive you, and I want you to have the best life that any person could ever have. I forgive you. Well, I want you to know Jesus Christ came to us with the wounds in his hands and the pierced side. And Jesus Christ came to us with his body mutilated and risen from the grave. And we should have went to hell. We should have been damned forever. But Jesus Christ hugs us and embraces us and says, I forgive you. I want you to live forever, and I want you to have a wonderful life. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the merciful God we serve. And God has given us mercy. God has given us peace. God has given us love. And God has given us a future. I come to the last one. Three positions we hold, sanctified by God the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ, called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Three benefits we have, the mercy of God, the peace of God, and the love of God. I want to share with you three things will always, that will always remain. There are three things that will always remain for you and I, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how trying and, and how dark and how upsetting it gets, there's three things that will never change. Here they are. It's found in Psalm 100 and verse five. Psalm 100 and verse five. 
It says, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Verse five, I've preached for that, from that Psalm 100 many, many times. I've shared and preached from that. And I said, where did I miss this verse? Where in the world did I miss this verse? I'd read it, I'd read it, but it just, all, just like God turned on the lights. And God said, there's three things in that one verse five that will never change, that will always remain. Number one, God is good. Nothing will change God. He is good. He will always be good. He's a good God. Number two, mercy is everlasting. Mercy will never die. Mercy is everlasting. And number three, his truth endureth to all generations. The truth will stand forever. And I want you to know, in these last days, in these stormy times, I want to encourage you. This is end time encouragement. God called you by his voice. God drawed you to his son. God the Father, according to Jude 1 and, and, and verse 2, God the Father drawed you by the gospel of Jesus Christ, called you, and you answered the call. And God the Father sanctified you and positioned you in Jesus Christ and now you are preserved in Jesus Christ. Nothing can take you. Nothing can destroy you. Nothing can disintegrate you. You are preserved in Jesus Christ. Called. Called to be a child of God. Called to be heir, uh, heir of God. Join heir with Christ. Called to be uh, full of eternal life and one day called out of here. Not only has God given us those three beautiful positions but God has given us three beautiful things to hold on to, three things that we can hold on to, and that is mercy, peace, and love. We, we can't go wrong with mercy, peace, and love. Are you listening to me? Because there are three things that will never change, that will remain forever. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And I want you to know, his truth will never change. We serve a God. Woo! We serve a God. Mm, man, this is awesome. We serve a God that's on our side. We're not trying to barely get through, barely get by. We've got God on our side. And I want you to understand today, if you're just a church goer and you just come occasionally and you're not much involved in the things of God, I feel sorry for you. Loving on Jesus is the sweetest thing in my life. Loving on Jesus is the most wonderful thing that I have every week. Loving my Jesus, loving my God, coming to church, live, serving God and hearing about how big God is and watching Jesus flex his muscles and feeling the presence of God sweep this place. Listen, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are more than just some people in flesh. We are more than people that just go through trials. We're more, we are sons and daughters of God. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are preserved in Jesus Christ. The devil can't get us. He can't get us. Death can't get us. Destruction can't get us. Nothing can get us. We are preserved in Jesus Christ. Locked up, free of the Holy Ghost. Locked up in the presence of God. And nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. How's that for end time encouragement? Woo, praise the Lord. I don't need that end time encouragement. It goes like this. Well, just hold on. It'll get better after a while. Just hang on tight, saints. We're gonna get through here. You may get the stuffings beat out of you before you get there, but just hang on, you'll get there. That's not the kind of encouragement I wanna hear. I wanna hear the kind of encouragement that's Bible, that says I'm preserved in Jesus Christ. I wanna hear what's Bible. God has called me and God has sanctified me and I'm positionally sound in Jesus Christ and that God brings to me 
everlasting mercy. God brings to me peace that the world doesn't give. God brings to me love that nothing will penetrate, nothing will sever. God brings to me his goodness and I find the good God and I find the merciful God and God brings his mercy and his kindness and not only that, God says his truth stands forever and Jesus Christ said I am the way, the truth and the life. John 14 6, I'm so glad that I found Jesus and when I found Jesus, I found truth and I found life and I found the way and I found mercy and I found grace and I found forgiveness. When I found Jesus he took me around uh, took me up in his arms, embraced me and loved me and said to me the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill and destroy but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And Jesus hugs you. And Jesus hugs you. I said, and Jesus hugs you up. And he says, we are going home. Going home. Going home. Amen. Stand with me. End time encouragement. If you will remember what I preached the rest of this week, you're going to have a happy week. If you'll remember this sermon the rest of this week, you're going to have a happy week. Amen? If you feel like air's coming out of you, you feel like you're starting to lose your momentum, show up Wednesday night and Joshua will pump you up again. Or deflate you, I don't know which way he'll go. But anyway... Joshua did a good job. He always does. Did you hear him on television this morning? Amen. That really wasn't him. That was me. I've lost a lot of weight. And I'm looking really younger. No, it was him. Alders of one invite you to come. Maybe you'd like to just come and say, God, I want to thank you for being preserved in Jesus. God, I want to thank you for giving me hope, giving me peace, giving me life. You come. Jesus is tenderly calling thee home, calling today, calling today. God wants to forgive you. He wants to hug you up in his arms. Mercy be multiplied, peace be multiplied, love be multiplied. Oh, he had mercy on me when all my hope was gone. No world turned against me, found myself alone. Oh, this goodness life I live produced its evil seed. Oh, but when I called on Jesus, Mercy on me Where the world promised happiness Only brought me woe It promises a pleasure Brought death to my soul Where the wages of my sin Were there for me to see I cried out for forgiveness And mercy on me Yet mercy on me When all my hope was gone no world turned against me, found myself alone. But it's gone inside while I live, produced its evil seed. Oh, but when I call on Jesus, mercy on me. Well, like the two thieves that hung at Jesus' side, I was guilty of sin and then condemned to die. I cried out to the Savior, unworthy as could be. Oh, but Jesus heard my prayer, get mercy on me. Get mercy on me, when all my hope was gone. The old world turned against me, I found myself alone. For oh, this God is life I live, reduced to evil seed. Oh, but when I called on Jesus, Mercy on me, Lord God. Now 
listen Oh, convicted by the Holy Ghost Face of God's your wrath I knew I was guilty No excuse for my path Turn it to the blood of Jesus Mercy of the court I plead I heard him say not guilty He had mercy on me He had mercy on me When all my hope was gone The old world turned against me And I found myself alone But this kind of life I live Produced its evil seed Oh, but when I called on Jesus Mercy on me Well, you know I'm here to tell you He still saves and forgives No matter what you might have done Life that you live He shed his blood at Calvary We can live and be free You can live with this assurance Yet mercy on me Oh, yet mercy on me All my hope is gone The old world turns against me And I found myself alone But it's got this life I live Reduced its evil seed Oh, but when I call on Jesus Mercy on me Yes, when I call on Jesus Mercy on me Keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to Thee. Just a closer. Walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Let it be, 
Dear Lord, let it be. I opened my eyes and discovered my shame. I hid from your voice when you called out my name. And cursed to the ground, yet you covered my shame. And blessed be God and the gift that he gave. The sweat from my brow marks the place that I lay. The ground where God formed me would become my grave. But God made a way until the price could be paid. Oh, blessed be God and the gift that he gave. Blessed be God and praise his sweet name. He made a way when there was no way. Deserving was I of death, hell, and the grave. Well, he made a way. Oh, Jesus, my Savior, died on the tree. The sinless who rose victoriously. Oh, blessed be God and praise his sweet name for his son that he gave. And you looked at us with compassion and love, considered the cost to give a life from above, not willing that any perish in sin and blessed be God and the gift that he gave you commended your love towards sinners like me and though still yet sinners you gave your life on a tree and Jesus God's only begotten son oh blessed be God and the son that he gave and blessed be God, and praise his sweet name, he made a way when there was no way, deserving was I, death, hell, and the grave, oh, he made a way, yes, he did, oh, Jesus, my Savior, died on the tree, the sinless he rose victoriously, oh, blessed be God, and praise his sweet name for the son that he gave. Oh, blessed be God, and praise his sweet name for the son that he gave. Oh, Jesus and my Savior shed his precious blood when he took all of my sins oh nailed them to his cross oh the grave could not hold him oh he holds the key oh, all who were captive Oh, Jesus set free. Oh, sinners held captive. Thank you, Lord. Oh, sinners like me. Oh, Jesus set free. Oh, blessed be God. And praise his sweet name He made a way When there was no way Deserving was I Of death, hell, and the grave Oh, he made a way Thank you, Lord Jesus, my Savior Died on the tree The sinless rose Victoriously Oh, blessed be God Praise his sweet name for a son that he gave. Let's sing it again. 
Oh, blessed be God, praise his sweet name. He made a way when there was no way. Deserving was I, death, hell, and the grave. Oh, but he made a way. Oh, Jesus, my Savior, died on the tree. Sinless he rose victoriously. Oh, blessed be God. Praise his sweet name for the son that he gave. Oh, blessed be God. Praise his sweet name for the son that he gave. Sins. 